at Iblida we made a survey on how libraries contribute to informal and non-formal learning and we find out that actually 92% of libraries in Europe provide for informal or non-formal learning and uh, re we reach about 24 million Europeans every year. So there are a lot of things that we can do in this non-formal environment that, we, that would be complementary to formal education. Uh, reading is fluid and you can do it in every type of environment. Uh, you can do it also for any kind of purpose. So you can read at home, read at school, you can also read for work, read for laser, and you can learn of, uh, read on very different type of, um, of material. You can read on paper, you can read on screens, you can read on your mobile phone, etc. So all of this forms part of the way you are learning, actually. And it's important that we keep this approach that pupils and people in general are more and more um, accustomed to read on different kind of format. And uh, they want this also, and they ask for this. And this is all part of a process of education. And we need uh, for the schools and for the libraries to remain open to new forms uh, of learning and really forms that are transversal and that are not too much separated between school at home and uh, too, not too much separated between formal learning and informal learning because everything contributes to the education of uh, the society and of the people. We discussed about critical thinking and how it's important and what kind of role libraries and schools can play in this to ensure that people are not manipulated when they are using um, internet tools and that they are uh, able to develop their own um, critical thinking on things. So that's, um, that's a, um, an issue where um, libraries actually need to straighten their position with, with schools because um, skills actually are transversal. You are learning uh, in formal environment at school, you are learning at home in informal environment, but actually you don't learn in silos, you learn every time. There are a lot of um, different uh, partnerships in different EU countries and I think there are also different uh, relationships between schools and libraries in the different countries in the European Union. And also at uh, municipal level it, it depends on the funding provided by the local municipality. Because you can have um, you know, really active municipalities that are engaged in promoting reading and wants the library to work in close relationship with the schools, but you can also have sometimes a lack of support between the different entities. And uh, if we look to uh, forward-looking partnership, for instance, we can have a look on in Denmark, uh, where you can find a combi library that combines actually a school library and a public library. So then the, the, the pupils can learn a lot of uh, on the joy of reading and what it is to be in a library and how they can improve their knowledge and it remains at the same time a pleasure and a laser. One important step forward would be to have more interaction between teachers and librarians. Uh, there are always, um, I think one of, the, um, one of the secrets would be to know more what the other is doing because actually one of the issues that we have is that we don't know what the other professional are really doing with, for instance, with the children and they don't really know what is the work of the librarian. Uh, so I think we, we should develop more bridges between the, between the, the two different professions. Mm -hmm.